Um, so our journey with continuous improvement started um, with a David Langford course that our principal brought to Grandview Hills. And um, David asked us to sit down and figure out what's one thing that we wanted to improve. And um, we're kind of always wanting to improve everything. So yes. it was really hard for us <laughs> in the very beginning to just choose one thing. We knew that our math wasn't running the way that we wanted and we didn't think that the kids were really learning anything. Um, and so we, we wanted to get their idea of what they wanted to do. And again, kind of how I mentioned, I think, at least for my class, it built trust because nobody trusted anybody in my room. Everybody was kind of, you know, pulling each other down all the time. We were having lots of issues. And so this was just, I think, an open space and forum for the kids to be heard. So, I am new to the district this year and I came from Lake Travis ISD and um, I taught just science all day long to fifth graders. And I thought, wow, can't get any better than this because I love science. I've never done self-contained before ever and I've never done IB, so I knew it was gonna be a, a learning year. So um, <clears throat> starting off the school year was extremely difficult, just trying to wrap my brain around how am I gonna get everything in and do lessons and lesson planning and trying to micromanage every moment of the student's day, which is, I guess, what I'm kind of used to. Um, and then it just wasn't working for me anymore. Um, it was just too much all the time, all day long, um, and I was miserable. And then we did the, the Langford training and everything just changed, right? then and there. Um, he taught us how to get the students motivated, um, intrinsic motivation, so there's no bribery involved, and um, just letting go and letting the students create their own, um, their own um, learning experiences. And because they are creating their own, they love it. It's theirs, and they take ownership of it. Um, I'm a special educator in the classroom, and I'm one of the um, I'm an inclusion teacher, so I have um, a certain amount of kiddos in here that I need to track, and um, I'm specifically in here for math. So I've worked with the matrice since January, I guess, um, and I've seen a complete transformation with my kiddos um, that are in here, with all of them, but more specifically, um, a lot of course of my job is working on the academics but it's also working on the independence and being self-motivated and having your materials ready and getting everything they need to learn um, where at the beginning of the year I was running around from desk to desk making sure that they had their pencil and they were open to the right page and they were following along and taking the notes and um, I was exhausted after every hour and a half of doing mm -hmm. that um, where now that has completely changed because I am um, so you get out your matrix, tell me where you're at. And so they are in charge of telling me where they're at and what they know and what they don't know. Um, and I say, okay, do you know what you're doing today? And they'll look on their matrix and I'll say, do you think you need to go to workshop? And um, they're like, yeah. <laughs> and so like, um, this is our capacity matrix for math. It, it shows um, all the pages that you have to complete and um, what you're learning in that section of pages. So the beginner, learner, expert, and mentor, um, like you'd rate yourself on how you think you would do on these. And over time, when you're doing the pages, you could update that. Like for instance, I'm, I'm, I was a beginner on unit 27, and now I should have changed it, but I'm a expert now. I'm gonna share about the Lotus Diagram. What it's basically about is saying like what we thought was important to do in reading. And so what she did is then we sat down and then we put it in order that we thought was gonna work the best for us. So it kind of helps us because like we get to say, well, this is important. Why should it? We, why should it? The, why should the teacher choose when we we also get to decide? Major things in life. Organize so in the morning, like we have a morning flow chart over there, and it tells us that we have to put our snack on top of uh, our cubbies, and and like when we first didn't have that, Mr. Winnie was like, 
kind of bossing us around like, uh, all right, guys, you're gonna have to come over here. And um, some of us are nine and 10, and we need kind of like take charge. And so she started making some flow charts and, and we, um, now we just do stuff for ourselves. And this is our math flow chart for today. So, so if I'm not ready, I would go to the workshop, which is, which I was at the minute ago when you saw me over there. That's the workshop. And if you said yes, you have to do three problems, which is, which is, which is 152, 154, and 156. After that, you play a game. We use the parking lot to like share what the teacher is doing like good and what like she can like work on and um, and any questions that you have like that need to be answered. The greatest impact would be uh, that I learned that I was a bit of a control freak. Um, it l helped me let go. Um, I didn't think that I wanted as much control over the classroom as I learned that I did. Uh, and it's just nice to kind of give it to the kids. I didn't think at first that they would be able to really kind of take off with it. I knew that they would enjoy it and I knew that they would kind of take it and run with it, but the connections that they're making between the ways that they work and being able to really kind of pace themselves has been really nice. And it, it, <laughs> Again, as a teacher, you want to control everything and just kind of fix it right there or go on Pinterest and find some new latest thing or whatever it is or talk to a colleague and just fix it. And so I think trusting in the whole process has been pretty powerful. Um, and so reflecting on the entire year, like I'm so proud of my class and how they've grown. Mm -hmm. um, I'm proud of myself for giving up control. Um, you know, we still have issues that we're working out, but we've grown so much together and as individuals, I mean, as students, I feel like they're very well prepared to go meet a new group of people and students next year, whether they're here at Grandview or they go to a different school. The greatest impact has been um, the fact that I can change the way that we do things in the classroom um, for the better and not just for the kids and the way that the classroom runs, but also for myself. It really is what you make of it. I mean, that's the nice thing about Langford is um, he gives you tools to use, mm -hmm. but you take those tools and you adapt them to what your class needs. And um, that satisfies their needs and our needs. So it can really look like anything that you want it to look like as long as um, the students are in control and have that element of control. And when they have that control over what they're doing, they're happy. I think after going to the quality learning program with David Langford, the biggest impact it made for me was that children have the ability to make their own decisions. And when you give up trying to run the room and let them take ownership of the classroom and of their own learning, my life became so much easier and the children became more prideful and taking more ownership in their work.